this is the second week of our book club studying um, the outstanding user interfaces with Shiny book um, for, you know, developing um, novel front end kind of user interfaces for, for Shiny applications. Um, for those watching on YouTube, this is a book club that we're running through the Arthur Data Science community. And um, we are, you know, going through it chapter by chapter to, to learn the different stuff in the book. Um, today, Lucio is going to be talking about chapter two, which is on the HTML tools package in, um, in R. So this is all for the shiny uh, framework uh, within R. Um, and yeah, uh, so this is like a, a tool for, for helping you write HTML and work with HTML um, as an R developer. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if Lucio, you, you would like to share your screen. I know it's edited, but I feel like that's kind of awesome. Okay. You are muted at the moment. Hey, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see your screen fine. Thanks. Okay. I said, do I start now or do we wait a little more? Uh, um, well, we've got five people in the room and there was six or seven last week. Um, to be honest, I think we can probably start because I think that the, the start of this chapter is it will, will be accessible. And um, yeah, I don't know if, you, if you'd like to, to, to carry on this. Or, or if you want to give us a kind of overall impression of the chapter and stuff and, and while people are arriving. Uh, well, you, you already described the chapter. So it's basically about uh, creating content for a, for a web application, but, but using R. Uh, we're also going to be modifying some of such HTML elements. Uh, we will also get a uh, a way to define how such elements should be displayed into the page, depending on some conditions. Uh, for example, uh, if you're running Shiny in developer mode or other options. So all of these manipulations will be via the HTML tools package. Um, and it works as follows. Let's say yeah, we want to create some deep element tag. So that would be something of the form like this. Some, some content for the page, then you simply use a deep function for the, from the HTML, HTML tools package. And um, as you can see from the simple extract instructions, we have already created some content for our website. Now for, for these functions, those are uh, functions to create some element for the page. Uh, they have two ways to, sorry, to, two classes of parameters. The name parameters, uh, they will become attributes of the element. So something like ID of the deep element or class of the deep element. And unnamed elements or parameters really will become children. So in this case, this unnamed parameter, this deep child will be the children of this deep element. As we can see over here, the output is this child for this deep element with a specific uh, parameters. Now also for the uh, more complicated uh, data slash uh, attri something attribute for HTML, if you want to include it, you have to use backticks. So as you can see over here, it works. Uh, now, because only a couple of of HTML elements uh, can be directly inserted into, into the page using R without these tags, dollar suffix, no, sorry, prefix. Uh, for example, with the P element H1 or deep. Uh, if you want to avoid having to write tags dollar, uh, you can enclose all of these HTML elements via this function with tags. So now, HTML elements that require that require the use of this prefix, such as the nav element for the navigation of a website. 
Okay, uh, one moment. Then you can simply avoid this for all of those inside your with tax uh, function wrapper. Okay, so there is a question from Arthur. Uh, for the back ticks, is that a requirement because the name? Yes, or because that's for a for non treatment. Uh, no, it's because the first that you mentioned is so that R can recognize uh, such a specific parameter. Thanks. Okay, now there is also a way to include more than one HTML element. And of course, you can wrap it into a list, but it's better to wrap it via this function tech list because uh, this wrapping uh, has a class, an R class of shiny tech list. So this, this specific R class will be useful for us from for a couple sections forward uh, where we can query the, the contents of elements or perhaps for printing this expression into how it would look in the page, uh, but not like uh, in some other perhaps a year way for R to print it. So it basically it adds capability for R to know that is some HTML content. And so use this instead of this. Now, also, I forgot to mention in the beginning, but uh, compared to the book, there, there are many cases where I use the word elements instead of tags, because I think that the author has a, a bit of a misconception about what is a tag, in, not, in a, not in a shiny way, but in a front-end uh, way. But in some cases, there is really no distinction between tags or elements, so I will just simply use tags. So th there may be there may be a little bit of uh, different syntax between these nodes and, and the book. Now you can also create custom sorry, tags. Sorry, um, could could you clarify what you mean there as the what the difference between an element and a tag ought uh, to yeah, be? Because sometimes the the author says, let's say that you want to modify uh, a tag. But what, and he then explains that you can add attributes to that tag or insert children into such tag. But really, you are not modifying the tag. You are modifying the HTML, HTML element. So say I want to modify this test tag, then I can add attributes to it. But if I am doing that, really, I am not modifying the tag. That is, I am not modifying this text uh, between the less than character and the greater than character. Okay. But I am modifying the actual element that is this whole thing over here. Right, okay, great, thanks. Yeah, it really just, just a matter of the syntax. So, no, sorry, the syntax for HTML. Tag is this text to denote what type of HTML element it is. And the HTML element is uh, the whole thing. Uh, okay, so in the next part, we're looking how to create new tags. Really, it would be new HTML elements. Uh, I missed a type of order. Uh, so you, to do that, we use the tag function. Over here, we define the name of the tag. So this part over here. Uh, and in the following parameters, we can include, for example, attributes for our tag. And, the, and similar to other, pre, to other cases, these unnamed parameters become the children of the actual element. In this case, this test HTML element. So if we can see this element became the child because it's enclosed between this test element. Now, and you can see that it is, it is enclosed because this test has this opening tag, this part over here, and this closing tag. A similar syntax, but with the forward slash. Uh, then there is a caveat uh, because if you know, if you already know front end, you may be thinking, oh, maybe if I want to insert page, sorry, if I want to insert, insert HTML content into my page, I already know the HTML code, so I can do it directly. Uh, but because you're doing it from R, sometimes there may be a couple of complications, such as this one. If you simply write this expression uh, to denote, a deep element 
with this text content and with this uh, another HTML element inside of it, it is a child, then R would recognize it as this. So it, it would properly not be displayed, sorry, it would probably not be displayed properly into the page. So in order to take into consideration uh, these characters, when you are defining HTML elements inside another tag, then you can use this HTML function. So now these characters, uh, they do get parsed correctly. So now they would be displayed properly into the page. Uh, however, it is recommended that if you were to create uh, HTML elements, you don't do it directly via HTML syntax. That is, for example, via this function and the actual raw HTML syntax, but that you do it directly via R. Uh, it's mainly due to this difference. We're going to create the same output, that is this deep element with text lorem but we do it in two different ways. This is the first one. This is the second one. And as we can see the output is the same, but the class of, of both these objects is different. For the first one is HTML and character, but for the second one, this more simple one, then the class is shiny tag. And again, that comes back into the fact that when, you, when we have this shiny tag class, we get a little more capabilities with some functions that we are going to cover. I think just in the actual next section, in this section, playing with that. So now we have clear how to create, how to create tags or HTML elements. But now if we want to modify them, then we have to understand what, what uh, which kind of properties do these HTML elements can have. For example, in the case of a shiny tag, they can have, what is the name of the tag, such as span or deep. Also, what are the attributes of such shiny tag? And that would be the attributes of the HTML elements. For example, the class, the ID, or the style, things like that. And the children, I will really know. Um, I'm going to make a difference over here. I will call this the R class of the shiny tag. And that is what we have been seeing in the shiny tag, but I am going to call it R class so that uh, whenever I use a word class, uh, we all know that I am referring to the HTML class because the author doesn't make that, doesn't make that distinction. So maybe it can be a little bit more complicated to understand so for someone who already knows frontend. So in this case, we define a simple deep element. We define also some of these, some of its parameters, and we set some children to it. This header of level one, this span, and also this children has some parameters. And now it's actual text content. So what is a form of this HTML element created? It's really all of this. We can access the R class of this <coughs> shiny tag or this HTML element via this function. And we get, for example, what kind of properties we can get from such element. Uh, and as you can see over here, the R class of this variable is shiny tag as well. We can access the name of such shiny tag. It is a div. Over here. The attributes such as class and ID and the children, the header and the span. Uh, because we can actually access these values or these lists, now we can modify them. For example, for this tag, that is this HTML element, we can modify it, say, in this way. To its second children, we want its attribute. So it's class attribute, we want to set it to adult. So what would be the change? The second children is a span. So now we are setting its class to adult. Uh, well, over here, the author proposes an example that I, I didn't really like it because it's perhaps, perhaps it's too general. Uh, he talks about a shiny RPG demo, but 
I think this makes more sense because we are only the beginning in the book and probably all of us are really accustomed with shiny. So I'm going to do like an analogy of a key dash, but with another, starting from another model. He uses the, the model of the select input from the shiny RPG package. The model I will use is how do select inputs look? That is what, how we see what is their HTML code. And when we encounter them um, in some arbitrary page in, in any website. Uh, and that tends to be this case. And they are inside, inside some container. It's usually not a div, it's really a form, but let, let's assume that it's a div. Then you have a label for your select inputs. And you have now your select element and the options for that select element. Now, how does Shiny generate a select, in, a select input for us? When we create it via the usual way, right, that we are accustomed to. We set some ID, some label, some choices, and we want to start from the first choice. So what is the HTML code that Shiny gener generates for us? It is as follows. Also a deep as a container, so the same, but now it has a class. It actually has two classes. We still get our label, but now it has a class, and that's sometimes not the, the general case. And now this select input is inside the deep once you generate it with Shiny. And again, that, that's a little bit different than the usual case in, in some front-end scenario. Uh, well, and the last part, uh, this function also generates us this script. I, I think so that there are, there are a couple more. So there is a, uh, what do you say? This the select input, it's a little bit more like fancy. It has a, a couple more capabilities that they are, and certain via this script. But the main idea is that we want to match this HTML extractor via the default one or the more common one. So how would we do that? Well, I already said the difference, right? The main container has a class. It usually doesn't have one. So we can change it. For this uh, HTML content, the attributes class, we remove it also. Now, the shiny, select has a class for the label and that's not the usual case so when we access the first children of this html element of this we get to the label and now we remove its class attributes class null and now perhaps the last uh, detail to change is that this select input is inside the div so we want to change that and it would be over here for the second child. So there is a child following the label. We want it to be the children of the content of the second child. That is the part over here. So now the second child is what, is what I have highlighted because as I print the, the the result after modifying this element, it, it looks like the other case. Of course, we could remove this script, but I don't want to because it probably breaks down a couple of things in your Shiny app if you do it that way. And I wrote this syntax in a different way uh, to how the author does it because it mirrors really what we will explore, uh, I think in the next chapter, no, in the next section with how to do all of this but in a more almost SQL like fashion. So Lucio, one, one question if I may about the, uh, just if you happen to know, um, but do you know why the, why these kind of, uh, let's see, like shiny, shiny produced elements have these classes? Is, is it, are there, is there like a style sheet that's being fed in by shiny or, is it for other things? Or just, just curious if you happen to know, just passing curiosity. Mm, I don't know really, but I would guess that it probably has to do something uh, with Bootstrap. The, the, whole shiny, <clears throat> the whole shiny package is implemented so that the classes that you define for your ah. XML elements, uh, they are actually both uh, classes that Bootstrap recognizes. 
Got it. And okay. so probably it helped BSLib, for example, if you're using it, target these things if you wanted to restyle them. Yes, I, I would. that would be my best guess, but I don't really know. Thanks so much. This is a really great example, by the way. Okay, thank you. Uh, and by the way, uh, anyone can interrupt me at any time. Uh, it's not an issue for me. So in this part, uh, we, that is, we're going to cover three ways. No, yes, three ways to modify the attributes or, or to modify really uh, HTML elements. This is the first one that we saw to do it via the usual R list syntax, but it is kind of ugly. Uh, the second one is with some special functions also from the HTML tools package. Uh, and well, and the third one will be like uh, almost a generalization of this one, but for a syntax that it's almost like a mix between jQuery and this JavaScript library uh, and, and SQL. So for this second method to modify HTML elements uh, created via R, we take a look at a couple of a couple of functions. For example, the tag append attributes to to insert no sorry to define the value of certain attributes for your HTML uh, element. In this case, we define some HTML element. It is a div, and this is its content. Uh, and then, which which sort of attributes can can we add to it? Uh, well, the most basic ones are its ID, its class, and of course this uh, data table. I, I keep using it as an example uh, to denote when do we need the backticks and when do we not. In this case, we do. And now that we have updated our tag, then the parameters, sorry, the attributes have also changed. Now we have another function to check if and some HTML element has some attribute. In this case, does this element has the attribute class? And in this case, it does. It is my class. You can check, sorry, now we can get the actual attribute uh, for an HTML element. And in this case, let's get the attribute class. So we would, we would, we would get as an output this test value. Uh, in this case, we don't need backticks for this data. Uh, I don't know if it is set slash. I will call it data minus toggle. I don't know the name of the character. Now we can replace the children as well of some HTML character. In this case, I have um, a parent, well, an HTML element with class parent, and this is his child, a paragraph uh, with text song. Now we can change its children. So now, for example, I can make so that these are the new children of the tag. So now only these ones that I have defined over here inside this tag list become the new children. But maybe instead of replacing them, replacing them all, we're going to add one or, or perhaps many of them. And we can do that via the tag append child or the tag append children function. So again, we have some deep element with class parent, and this is its son, sorry, its child, its child. I think we might have lost Lucio. I'm sure we'll reconnect. Um, we give them a minute. I'll ping him on Slack. We. While we're waiting for Lucio to, to reconnect that, um, I don't know if anyone on uh, kind of uh, in the group has much experience with JavaScript. I, I don't, but I've been kind of exploring it recently for a little project. It's really kind of remarkable how it, it seems like 
R is kind of offering us through HTML tools, like sort of like a one for one uh, match with basic JavaScript methods, but strangely, these things have different names. Uh, so for example, I think like the, um, when we were changing the attributes, for example, I think this is this is what, the way you might do it with vanilla JavaScript. I was just looking at the MDN documents. So it's set, set, attri set attribute instead of, uh, I think it's append attribute. Um, anyway, just kind of interest, interesting how, if if I'm right on that, how how they've offered kind of this like one for one match in a lot of cases, and they've they've elected to have a different different name. I don't know if that's helpful or or not for people who know both JavaScript and and Shiny. So that that's the um the the kind of JavaScript elements would be like element dot set class or something like that, would it? Whereas I can't remember exactly what it is you write in JavaScript to do these kind of things, like uh, yeah. So, um, so for the things that Lucio has just been showing, you'd do something like this um, to you'd identify the node that you want to modify and then use an append child method on that element. Am I talking about that? Um, uh, and similarly, you'd have like um, element dot set class and set ID, I imagine. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know, I mean, um but there does seem to be that there are alternative ways of 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 doing the same thing in javascript using j i think the syntax for jquery is slightly different isn't it um and perhaps html tools is just i think html tools grew out of shiny and they're probably just like replicating the bits of JavaScript that they needed in an R um, setting, but um, I don't know. Um, okay. Anyway, so what, um, how, are you, how are you going about learning JavaScript, um, Arthur? Haphazardly. <laughs> <laughs> I was I had I had a I had a problem the other day where I kind of wanted to to render something on the page and uh, like add add some uh, add some HTML elements uh, as a function of like what was already in the DOM and so I I was just kind of starting to sleuth around like how one would do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, hi everyone. Back. <laughs> yeah. I'm back. Sorry, I'm using data from my cell phone, so I'm hoping that um, that my sound doesn't get quite laggy. Uh, uh, so where will we now? Uh, defining constant functions or modifying the attributes or, or really other other stuff, maybe like removing a child for your functions. Sorry, for your HTML elements. Uh, while this is a code, really, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I hope to still get to finish that chapter because it is very interesting in the later parts. So now we have more more functions to modify, sorry, to update HTML elements. And many of them come from the Golden package. Um, and another nice uh, fact is that you can actually use the pipe operator uh, with these basic functions for modifying HTML elements. For example, we define some deep element. We set a class and a child, but now we can uh, compose this and yeah, these functions that we have been seeing in order to add more, sorry, in order to modify the actual element, like add some ID to the parent and perhaps append some child we see in the result. Okay, I think, sorry, I think I, I just got with, I just have an electric outage. Uh, the whole internet in my house has 
uh, disappeared. So probably my, my laptop will only last five minutes. Um, I, I, will, I won't be able to join. So I want to get that clear right now. So I want to continue at least in my laptop place. So uh, this part is interesting. Say you want to create some HTML element, but now the number of children, uh, it's not set, but it will depend on perhaps some condition or, or you want to create many of them programmatically. And you can do that via the, 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 the apply function, but I think map from this, fun this function map from the full package is maybe more popular. At least I prefer its syntax, so we can do this, right? Uh, we set some container, a div, and then we feed it uh, the, the result of this mapping for the number from, for, sorry, from the integers from one to five. We find some anonymous function that returns an span whose text content is this value. In this case, it will be an, as we see over here, an span whose value is this one, one, and a span whose value is the second input. In this case, it would be the number two and such and such. And again, we can also use a pipe operator. It will work smoothly to maybe in this last part, simply add a class to the parent. Okay, but now. Okay. Um... I think we might. Yeah, Lucius just told me that his laptop's died. Um, so the, the 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 final section of this chapter um, uses a, a a kind of modern syntax for um, HTML tools, um, which looks um, a little bit like jQuery to me. Can I share my screen rather than um, let's see what I can do here. Um, oops. And we'll just talk about that section. Um, but yeah, have, I don't know, have you all followed so far on? on um, ah, right, okay. So I've got the Um, notes for Lucio's book. I'll just have to render them. Hold on. Um, um, what would it be? Oh, or is it? Um, if I... Um, so the option is this one. Um, <laughs> he's got no internet, no electric at the moment. Right. Um, oh no, that's not how you do it, is it? It's, um, get climbed. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I'll try and get um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. What I'll do? I'll share my screen. Hmm, what's happened here? This is funny. Um, I can't tell quite which one you're seeing. Right, okay. Um, so if I go into... No, it wouldn't. Oh, has he pulled it yet? Uh, maybe not. Hold on. Um, do that again. But 
it would come from. Right, um, hopefully I'll be able to get this to work. Um, so you should be able to see my R Studio window, I think. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, cool. Um, let's see if we can get that to work. Well, I got the right branch open. Yes, right. Hey, um, so, uh, where were we? So the final section talks about alternative ways of using of, of manipulating HTML elements or tags. Um, and um, and there are, a new function was added in a, a, a relatively recent version of HTML tools that um, now seems to underpin quite a lot of the rest of um, the, the functions in HTML tools. And, um, so here you're using something called tag query. Um, and the the example that, that Lucio has been going through, you might create, I think that the, the last example that he did, he was making a, a span, a, a five different spans. And then wrapping them in a div. So this is a slightly more um advanced version of the same thing but if you wanted to modify so here if you wanted to modify the first child of that so that would be that and then the second child of that so that would be one of these elements so it would be span one i think Right, so it would be spans children one, children two, three, dot actress, of course. That's so sorry, my mental model of this has all gone wrong, and it's actually this third um thing here that's got been modified by this code here. Um, very easy, as I've just proved, to get completely lost. Um, oh, yeah. so, let me see you talking to me. Um, and and not know quite which element you're modifying when using this um, this this approach. With tag query, the syntax looks a bit simpler. So you might start with the same spans thing. So if I I got an R. Thing up, yeah. Um, so the original code looks like this. Looks like that, and we're trying to modify this third span within there. And what we're going to do is we're going to use tag query on that object, find all the span elements within it, and then do a kind of filter on that to just pull out those for which 
the presumably what was what's filter again? X I is it filter take an index or something? Um, so it's just identifying the third element within all the spans that it finds and adding a class element to it. So you can see that you're like pulling the third span element from in here using this code. And when you run that, it does the same thing and modifies, well, adds a class attribute to that span element. Um, um, and you can see in the the early example, if you've got this, which is that as your HTML structure, um, and um, if that was modified in any way, it might make it difficult for you. If it, if between this line and this line some modification was made to that it might make it difficult for you to um get this code to work because you you know modified the html element whereas um because you, you're kind of hard code hard coded by position as to which thing you want to well modify whereas where was it here the biggest advantage it doesn't always depend on the tag structure so finding the spans doesn't depend on the spans coming um in this position here um anyway maybe i've not explained that particularly well but but what tag query provides you is an alternative way of accessing html elements within a uh, you know a nested html structure and modifying specific ones that you want and um and in that way it works similarly to jquery in in javascript which i imagine we'll probably talk about in the third section of the book um okay what's the next bit html tools uh, basics um yes so tag query accepts either an element or a list of elements so you can um you can create a list of html elements using um a mag list something like that anyway um and that's effectively the same as kind of list um you can still access things in the same way so if i do tag list one i should pull out the first element and if i do tag list two it'll pull out the second element so access is quite similar to how you how it works in a list um, um if you look at the class of this it was shown earlier in the chapter the class of a tag list is shiny.tag.list um whereas that for a list is been working in R for a while it's probably no surprise um tag query itself can work with tag lists or with um the the shiny tag class objects the html elements on the on their own um and um when you actually look at it, hold on, what's the code here? Tag query, tag query of div of p, right? So that there is a kind of HTML element created that looks like this. If we run class of tag query, it tells us that it's a shiny.tag.query. And if we do look at the content of that object, it tells us that all the tags within it look like this whereas the selected tags looks like this so it's basically the same so there any more probably let's have a see tag query if i 
replicate that and we um um so if we do we copy that there um i do that was the thing in the previous page query yeah if we do find if we do tab find p now we see that the tag query itself all its tags look like this but the selected tags which are the things that the find method identified look like this so it it identifies the first paragraph element within there and puts that in the, the start of a list. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, so um, hold on. I'll get the next page up. Yeah, so, you, so within a tag query object, you can access all the tags, which are like all the HTML elements upon which that tag query is working. Um, whereas the selected tags are anything that are, are, have have been um, selected at, at, at the moment. Um, and where's the query tag thing? Yeah, so for now, you can only use CSS selectors. Now, we, we haven't talked about CSS selectors so far, um, but if you um in the second part of this book we will talk about them in a bit more detail so for example if we did um if i inspected this page and um what's this book summary so that anything with so the so i've opened up the page for this um the, the the book club notes and i've opened up the um dev tools in 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 chromium for it um i can get where is it copy um selector for that and if i go into here and print body to div to div something so um if i do document dot element oh, what is it now no it's not that is it something selector um It's that, isn't it? Yeah, right. Um, dot. We only sell it. So. Right, so what's happened here? Running in this code, if I run that again, it'll highlight it kind of interactively. This here is a CSS selector, so it finds the element that particular method will find the first element that matches this so it's some thing nested inside the the book's body that's nested inside a div element that has that is itself a div with the class of book summary so if we actually look at that um again you see that this is a div inside a div inside a body and it has the class of book summary. That's the kind of essence of how a CSS selector works. Um, and you can use those things to um, in tag query to find particular elements within your the HTML that you're creating. Um, you can also so find is used to find um elements based on a, a, a selector um 
you can also find parents and parents and children of of of, of so for example if i wanted to find um if i within the page wrapper class here if i wanted to find um all those children that had a class of tr i could do that by um sort of like filtering using these different query methods um sorry i'm not quite so clued up on what <laughs> what this was how this was supposed to work as a, a presentation but um uh, da, da, da. so here's an example right so we have um let's take this over to r and show you what that looks like is looks like that it's a list of three different divs um uh, each one has a class of tab pane and they have different titles one two and three and i think they have yeah they have different um text content as well so if we then well i mean we can nestle them inside a tab set and it all look like this so we've got um this is what the a, a page would look like where you've got a tab set panel and you have these three tabs nested inside it okay the the precise precisely what this html is responsible for doesn't really matter at the moment what we're going to do is try and find all those elements within it that have a tab pane class right so um so if i just take that tabs thing yeah and then same so what we do in tag query tabs find div dot tab pane so that finds any div element that's got a tab pane class we'll do that for now oops let's go back and add the missing t so this is the all tags entry and the selected tags entry right in here we've got the three things that are divs that have a tab pane class and we can then filter them further ah lucio is back in the room um so if we tag it attribute where the data value is three you can again see that all tags is as it was originally but the there's only one um selected tag and we can actually pull that out by using selected tags oh i used the wrong thing oh <laughs> yeah i thought it was Yeah, I must have made a mistake. Um, but that pulls out the, the selected tags as well. So this is like you're finding particular elements, you're able to filter them using um, you know, the uh, standard kind of deploy R type syntax for filtering objects, um, and then pull out the particular tags that you're interested in. Um so it's quite neat. Um, Lucio's back in the room. Um, I don't know whether he'd like to. <laughs> right, I'm getting up. Um, right, I'll just I'll, I'll kind of wrap it up and then let Lucio have a, a, a little um, word as well. Um, yeah, there are other things that you can do in addition to being able to like filter and find particular tags. You can modify tags using this tag query function as well uh, by adding and removing attributes by uh, uh, adding and removing classes and you can also kind of poll to see if things have particular attributes or particular attribute values 
Um, and there's an, another example. Uh, so here we're doing the same kind of thing we did earlier on, but with the tag query syntax instead. So you're finding all the tab pane elements and then adding the class fade to them. So you can see that it doesn't remove classes that previously existed on the HTML elements. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's quite neat. There are other ways that you can modify children and things like that, but it, it, it gets pretty complicated quite soon. Um, anyway, we're at the end of the hour now. Uh, I don't know whether, Lucio, you'd like to come on and say a couple of words. Um, uh, well, I think I would like to apologize. I, I hadn't prepared for an internet shortage. <laughs> well, an electricity one. But I did did uh, did most of the chapter get covered? Yes, yeah. It's only really this uh, modification of tags that I didn't get into, but it's quite a long section to be honest, and probably a little advanced. But um yes, yeah, we we um yeah, you'd you'd worked through the bulk of the playing with tag uh, no the modern html tools sort of introductory thing and then i did the the next bit so i think we covered uh the the notes that you put together um yeah it was quite it was a good um good chapter um yeah thanks for for presenting that um so have you done quite a bit of front end work before or something that um because you're obviously quite fluent with the um, the language and everything of. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't call it work. Uh, mostly like uh, personal projects. Uh, at most, perhaps the most official thing. Uh, what what what's what I learned in the JavaScript for our book club? Because then I got to publish uh, uh, in a in a conference a project related to that, but wrapping some JavaScript library in VR. So most of my experience with fronting is basic uh, JavaScript and perhaps intermediate HTML, intermediate CSS. Hmm. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, great. Well, thanks for taking us through this chapter, though. Um, sorry about the um, difficulties that towards the end, but, some, you know, you can't accidents will happen um anyway um next week um next week Oliver Fermi is going to be presenting chapter three um on what was it it was on kind of identifying dependencies in um presumably in shiny or in yes in shiny applications so this is things like the scripts that are imported into your, that are kind of loaded up by your app when they're running in a user's browser and, and things like that, I identifying those kinds of things. Um, brilliant, yeah, so uh, hopefully I'll see you all next week. Hope you, you're enjoying it and, and happily working through the book and stuff. If you've got any questions or anything like that, just post in the Slack channel and we'll try and work through them. If you've got any projects that you're working on that, um, that, that you think this book may help with, well, uh, we can discuss them as well, if you like. Cool, great. Thanks for coming along today. And thanks, Lucio, for doing the talk. That was brilliant. Okay, I'll see you next week. Thanks, Lucio. Bye-bye.